GoPro has been synonymous with action cameras for the better past of the last decade. They single-handedly created the small and rugged camera that can be used for a variety of different adventures, whether it's water sports, mountain biking, or even vlogging. However, issues like high temperature performance, reliability, and a lack of front touchscreen have left many customers frustrated for many years. Their ignorance to add these improvements and new features has allowed new competitors to enter the space and entice customers. Well, enter DJI. DJI's fourth iteration in the action camera space, the DJI Osmo Action 4. And while it is their most expensive, it is also their best one yet. So in this video, we'll talk a little bit about what makes the DJI Action 4 so great and so powerful as a small little camera. We'll talk about the video quality, the audio quality, the ease of use, whether it's the hardware or the software, and then also a few different considerations when it comes to battery life, the SD card, and a couple other things. But before I dive into all of the nitty gritty, I wanna to touch on why I decided to get an action camera in the first place. So I already have a main camera. I have the Sony a66 mirrorless camera paired with a Sigma 16 millimeter lens, which I'm actually filming this video on right now. While this is a heavenly combination for landscape photography, travel videography, and vlogging, it's not the most discreet. The setup is heavy and hard to handle, especially considering the fact that the lens protrudes out of the camera quite a bit. Given the size, it makes it a little bit hard to just pull out the camera in public and start vlogging. Also, while Sony does offer their own inbuilt stabilization in the name of SteadyShot, it's not the best. It does an okay job of taking away some of the shake when you're vlogging or taking some cinematic B-roll. You still have to do a lot of post editing to get some of that jitter out of the camera. Lastly, and this reason probably trumps all the others, but the Sony camera just can't go underwater. So given all those reasons, I decided to get the DJI Action 4. Okay, now we can talk about why I decided to go with the DJI, given that I just talked about GoPro in the beginning of this video. So take my advice with a grain of salt, since I've never really owned a GoPro, but after watching countless YouTube videos and reading a bunch of owners reviews on Reddit, so based on what I read, I decided to go with the DJI Action 4, mainly because of three reasons. So after reading all these reviews, I decided to go with the DJI Action 4 because of the better reliability, the front touch screen, and the ease of use. I won't go into extreme detail on all of these as there's many better videos explaining the comparisons, but at a high level, in terms of reliability, the GoPro has had a history of overheating when using it for an extended period of time in high temperatures. The easy solution around this is taking the battery out of the camera and putting it back in, which resets the camera and allows you to kind of keep shooting. But when you're filming underwater, which I was planning to do with my action camera, that isn't really feasible. So as for the front touchscreen, while the GoPro does have a screen at the front, it is not touch. So you can still frame your shot to make sure that you know, you're uh, captured well, the lighting behind you looks good while you're vlogging, you just can't change any of the settings like resolution, shutter speeds, or video modes right on the front touchscreen. Lastly, ease of use. And I say this one a bit more generically since it applies to both the software and hardware. In terms of the hardware, the DJI comes with a magnetic mounting system. So as you can see, I have this selfie stick. I can just clip on the using the magnetic mounting system and clips. Versus in the GoPro, you have to twist the knob every time uh, to take it off of different mounting systems. So as you can see, if you have a couple of different places where you use a camera, like a selfie stick, maybe in your car, maybe on you know a helmet or like a chest mount or you know whatever it is, every time you're going to be having to undo and redo this little um, this little knob thing. So that makes it just a little bit harder to move it around. Versus in DJI, you just quickly unclip it like this, super simple, and you're ready to go. In terms of the software, the GoPro software is a little bit dated to say. DJI has done a really good job of making the camera really easy to use out of the box, so you can get a good picture quality just from the basic settings. Also, any of the advanced settings are very easy to access. All right, so that's a little bit about why I chose the DJI over the GoPro Hero 11 or 12. So now let's talk a little bit more about the video and audio quality. So the small little DJI camera is a superstar when it comes to video quality. 
I took it on my recent trip to Hawaii and I was able to capture some amazing shots. I took the camera underwater to capture some cool fish and coral. I was able to take some cinematic B-roll and then I was also using it to vlog on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the main reasons that I bought this camera was for vlogging. I wanted to capture my true and raw emotions so I can look back at them after. While I did have the A6600 with me and I, and I took that on this trip, as I said earlier, it's not the easiest just to pull out of your bag and start recording. In terms of the field of view, at the largest, it's a 155 degree field of view, which is really, really wide. And so DJI gives you three different options. The ultra wide, which is the full maxed out 155 degrees, a little bit more cropped in wide view, which kind of removes some of the distortion on the sides, and then a standard. So all of these different angles allow you to change it up pretty quickly in the software, um, depending on what you're doing. If you're vlogging, you might want to go really wide, but if you're taking some underwater shots, you don't want that distortion, so you can switch it to standard. As for the actual video quality, I recorded mostly everything in the D-Log-M profile so that I could color correct it after using some LUTs that I found online, but you can just capture it using the standard profile and you get some really amazing videos. I'll throw some videos of my trip in Hawaii where I did record in the D-Log-M profile and then I color graded it afterwards. Given the fact that you can record in these multitude of different ways, you can get the standard kind of more flat look that comes with the D-Log-M profile or you can get that classic punk chi and saturated look that you can get with just a standard mode on action cameras. Even with the larger one over one third inch sensor this year, uh, if there are situations where the background is much brighter than the foreground, which is you know usually me during vlogging, it doesn't do the best job of keeping both things in focus and, and starts to blow out one or the other. While this is an issue in most cases, since you'll probably be using this uh, during the day and in good lighting conditions, it is something to consider. As for low light, given its physical limitations, I mean, look at the size of this, the camera sensor just isn't able to capture as much light as let's say a Sigma lens or a DSLR lens. So in low light, it really has to bump up the ISO and the video comes out really noisy and grainy. So all in all for vlogging, I think this camera is really awesome. I mean, you just plop this onto the selfie stick. The selfie stick extends quite a bit so you can get a really wide view when you're vlogging and also compacts down really easily. So you can carry it in your pocket or fanny pack or even your backpack really easily. The second use case that I had for this camera was underwater shots. So for underwater, DJI recommends that you use the standard profile and I use that to capture most of the shots that I took underwater. I attached the camera on the selfie stick, just tilted it a little bit up and was able to take videos of the fish and coral while I was snorkeling. Since I used the D-Log-M profile, the picture came out quite flat, but using some easy color corrections in Final Cut Pro afterwards, I was able to get a really good usable footage. And honestly, it looks a lot better on the camera than it did to my eye when I was snorkeling. So lastly, cinematic B-roll. So for cinematic shots, you can use this camera in a variety of different ways. So you can use a selfie stick and the really good stabilization in the camera to get almost drone-like shots. So you can extend this you know, really, really long and, you know, kind of fly it overhead or move it around back and forth and get some really cool overhead shots. You can also use some of the time-lapse settings that come built into the camera to capture moving clouds, sunsets and sunrises, and even people moving in highly dense areas like in the cities um, to get some really cool shots where you're showing time progressing. There are a couple of different modes in the time-lapse settings that I won't go into, but it really gives you the flexibility and creativity to kind of get this shot that you want exactly. Now let's talk about something that's equally as important as the video quality, the audio quality. So the inbuilt microphones actually do a pretty good job. They have decent stereo separation and even have a little bit of voice isolation so it's able to remove some of the background noise and really focus in on you. But that's given some almost ideal conditions if there's a little hum in the background or some you know, wind. But the second you bump up any ambient noise like traffic or construction or heavy wind areas, the mic starts to become more and more unusable. Top of Lanikai and this one is a tough one. Pretty steep, uh, short distance, so just like climbing up and up. We can already see beautiful. Since I wanted to vlog with this camera, I wanted to make sure that my voice was picked up appropriately, so I wanted to use an external mic. I already have an external mic that I'll show right now, 
that I've been using to record this video that I wanted to use on my DJI as well. Since the DJI camera doesn't really have a cold shoe mount, I had to buy a cage with this adapter so I could start using this microphone. So I got this rugged metal case from this company that I'll link down below. But essentially you're able to pop your little DJI Osmo Action 4 camera in and then have two main things. One is an extra bit of protection since this cage is pretty strong and sturdy and made of a, a good metal material. Um, but also comes with a cold shoe adapter. So this cold shoe adapter allows you to put, you know, a boom mic right onto the camera. Since the DJI doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter input jack, actually it only has a USB-C input. I had to get a converter on Amazon for very cheap, but that plugged right in and I was able to get good audio right out of the box. Um, we had to watch this educational video uh, about like how to protect the reef. And yeah, now we're finally here. Before that, we planned to the T to make sure. The one main issue that I was having with this microphone is that when I attach the wind muffler, which is quite large, to the microphone, it was visible in the video. Given the fact that the microphone sits so close to the camera, the wind muffler is visible and that's a bit annoying. The easy fix for me was tilting the microphone a little bit up, which removed it from the frame, but then my voice wasn't as usable. The second option I had was to crop in a little bit, which meant that I had less usable space to play with. So not the best solution either, but something to consider. Okay, now that we covered video, audio, let's talk about usability. I'd say this is probably also equally important as video and audio because getting started and actually capturing video comes at the cost of how good the software is. So the DJI makes it stupidly easy to set up once you get out of the box and then really easy to control, whether you wanna shoot video, photos, or time-lapse. The most basic settings like video modes, resolution, shutter speed, stabilization, are very accessible by swiping down from the top. The camera also has quick shoot modes. So on one side of the camera, you have the power button. So this acts as a power button, but also as a quick shoot button. So once the camera is on, you can press the button to cycle through a couple of different modes. So by default, you have video, camera, and time-lapse, but then you can also build some custom modes by changing the resolution, the shutter speed, the stabilization, you know, whatever permutation combination you want, and then you can cycle between them really easily. I have a couple of different modes set up, mainly for if I wanna do vlogging, if I wanna be vlogging in low light, or if I'm gonna be taking some cinematic B-roll. So I can, so I don't have to play around with the settings every time, I can just kind of set it up once, never think about it, and then quickly switch between the three when I know I'm gonna be taking one or the other. The other cool thing is you can set up this fast shoot mode. I'm not really sure exactly what it's called, but essentially what it is is when you press the record button while the camera is off, the camera will immediately turn on, you know, almost instantaneously, less than a second, start recording in the default video mode that you had set up. And then the second you're done recording, press the record button again, the camera will shut off in three seconds. So this makes it really, really easy to just pull it out of your backpack or pocket, start recording, capture your thoughts or capture that event or animal or, or whatever it is. And then boom, the camera's done. So let's talk about the battery life. So the battery life of this thing is pretty insane. So I use a camera for about 30 minutes to an hour per day, um, doing some recording for vlogging, for cinematic shots and HDR time lapses. And I think the battery went down to maybe 30%. And while I did get the adventure bundle that comes with this battery charging case and two extra batteries, I never needed to switch to a second battery or even third battery in a single day of recording. And that was with pretty heavy usage in my opinion. So I'd say if you're recording you know, more than that, if you're vlogging all day, definitely recommend getting the battery pack as that's gonna come in clutch. But I think for most average consumers, just having the single battery should be more than enough. That being said, I didn't really record in high temperature areas. In Hawaii, the weather was you know, absolutely perfect. In the 70s, I took the camera underwater, which is obviously a much cooler. So I didn't get to really stress test it, but I think in higher temperatures, it might go through the battery a little bit faster. So in conclusion, the DJI Action 4 is an amazing camera. While I haven't stretched its limits yet with true action and adventure shots, I still have used it for a variety of different things. I had a blast using this as my primary camera on my trip to Hawaii, and I was blown away by the footage that I got while I was editing the videos. Awesome, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that one. 
If you have any questions or ideas, please drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this, give me a like. And if you want to see more tech videos in the future, please hit that subscribe button. See y'all in the next one.